We've been treating cities as if they were fixed over time. But obviously, cities last for centuries and conditions change. In this video, we're going to talk about how the durability of housing impacts urban dynamics. Let's imagine that we've arrived in 2018 in Gotham, and we've got a fixed number of existing homes. Let's say that there are a million of them, and builders don't need to spend anything to maintain that stock of housing. But if you want more than a million homes, you've got to start building. And we have the usual upward sloping supply curve starting at some base construction cost. So let's draw on a single graph the supply curve for new housing, which looks just like the old one. A base price for the first new home and rising construction costs after that point. Let's also draw the supply of existing homes. That's just a vertical line at one million. Now let's add them together. If the price is less than that initial construction cost, then the supply of housing will just be the existing stock. If the price of housing is higher, then the supply increases just like before. The result is a kinked curve, with a kink at the quantity of existing homes and the price of building the first new home. Now let's see what happens when demand shifts. Let's assume that the basic demand curve is a downward sloping line that runs through the kink point. That intersection would explain why the city starts 2018 with exactly one million homes. Now let's assume that demand shifts upward perhaps because of an increase in the productivity or amenities of the city. Demand moves up, quantity and prices both go up. As before, price moves more if new supply is inelastic. Quantity moves more if new supply is elastic. But what if demand shifts downward because either productivity falls or amenities deteriorate? In that case, price certainly falls, but the quantity of homes stays constant since they've already been built and they are durable. Upward demand shifts show up in both price and quantity. Downward demand shifts just show up in declining prices. After a while, of course, the housing will deteriorate, and maybe some homes will even become vacant. But the model clearly predicts that declining cities will lose population slowly, but prices will drop quickly. Does this fit the world? Yes. America's industrial heartland is filled with cities like Cleveland and Detroit that have been declining for decades. These places built a lot of homes before 1950 when they were the industrial showcases of the world. Their industries relocated and sometimes faltered, and demand for these cities shrank. But the housing stock remained, and housing ended up costing far less than construction costs. If housing were less durable, they would have shrunk far more quickly. But homes last, and consequently, the process of urban downsizing can be slow and quite painful.